I'd like to introduce Olive Reich, longtime member of the Brooklyn Watercolor Society, who's here to talk about her art and her process. Olive? Well, hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I've been with the Brooklyn Watercolor Society for many, many, many years, like from the very, very beginning. In fact, Terry introduced me to the Brooklyn Watercolor Society. How many years, Terry? Oh, maybe just 10. 35? <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Uh, uh, everyone seems to do watercolor a little bit differently. Everyone seems to have their own particular uh, love of color, which is my favorite thing is color. And uh, But everyone does it differently, uh, in pat like in patterns or in washes, which is when you have a lot of water on your paper and uh, you put the color into the water, or you have your brush full of water, and you put it on the paper and it spreads out. I prefer more of a patterny look, working in small areas. Uh, this is a still life. I love fabric. Um, I think I could have been a fabric designer because I love it so much. But this is strictly uh, fabric with a lone, I call it lone pair. So, um, that with the blues and the yellows, complementary colors. So maybe we'll bring another one up. Could I ask a question about this? Of course. That one. Was which one? The first? Did you did you work did you work from fabric or did you create the fabric? I worked on fabric. You have you used the I love, fabric. I love patterns and I love fabric. And here, it's not fabric, but it's uh, just small areas of color, just making, uh, this is an early one, um, with flowers and the bird, just in small um, flat spaces to make a, again, to make a pattern, but it's not from actual fabric. So this is, uh, and the colors, the gray bird, uh, I think, but the bluish tin complements the reds of the flowers. Mm -hmm. Do you sketch a lot first? Uh, I do sketch a lot. Uh, when I get into, when I have complex things, uh, like, or maybe leaves, or maybe in a forest or something, I'll have the main things in, but then I can improvise mm -hmm. with ju then just putting in small uh, areas. So you plan ahead, you don't work directly? I plan ahead. Plan. It may not end up exactly. And again, I'm uh, working in the, uh, the smaller areas. Uh, an old quilt, which I love, old quilts, I have quite a collection. And uh, I've done a lot of Christmas cards using quilts and old baskets and things that signify the holidays or Christmas. So, uh, and the red and the green, of course, is the complementary, and it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, any questions on that? No. <coughs> now, this is not a still life. Oh, this is great. Polar bears are very big in our family. My husband went to Bowdoin. And uh, polar bear is the uh, mascot, and uh, I don't know. I love polar bears. I just started. I've done a whole series of polar bears, and um, this one kind of also ties in with the environment because um, I call it where are all the ice flows going, and it's the polar bear looking for where he he lives, and it's all disappearing, uh, melting away. So this is uh, the polar bear. Was that done from a photo? Or is it from, from the polar bear, yeah. yes. I, I can't do that out of my head. But the, but the, land, oh, no, the, no, the no. landscape you improvise? Yeah, I improvise a lot. Yeah. I've done a whole series of polar bears. So um, they're very important. In our life, all our boats, all our boats, we have a couple of boats out in Long Island, and they all have names like one is polar bear, and uh, I forget what, <laughs> I can't say that, but everyone has a name. One is Cubs, 
So that's more of a wash. That's uh, the wash put on first, and then the area put in to make it look cold and icy, and of course the polar bear drawn in and done specifically. So those are my It looks to me that you preserved your white. You did not use white paint that I can I see. do preserve my white, yes. That's something I forgot That's to mention. That's an important yes. thing because people it's are always It's very important in watercolor, And yes. people are astounded that if you have an area of, a, say, a daisy, and it's not white paint, it's so much more beautiful and expressive of the quality of the essence of a, of a, of a flower or whatever it is. That you put the dark around it's the white. Not Something That's, put on it. Of course, this isn't strong because I have never been to Iceland or anywhere, but this is what I assume. Well, it's giving me the chills. Okay, <laughs> that's a good sign. So that's basically uh, a lot of pattern work and then some with washes. And the washes, of course, when you take the water and the paint and put a lot on your brush and then uh, spread it over the paper. And you can get different, and you can pick up the paper when this wet is on it, and let it drip down too. Also, it's you're letting the. I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You're letting the medium direct you exactly. and be itself, and that's a beautiful thing with watercolor. When it's very precise and very, it's not the real essence of what watercolor is. Uh, it's to see what happens, well, like that different. little smudge of blue, that's beautiful. You can use watercolor in many different ways. Yes, but I feel that you're really uh, respecting the medium itself to let it to let the direct you. Well, rather when than you're you doing flowers and leaves, you, you have to have that. Oh, definitely. Light I'm not dark. saying no, yeah. but the dominant factor right. is the medium doing its own thing. Right. So that's kind of the variety of what I've been doing uh, over the many, many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> and I've kind of ended up doing more of a uh, patterny type of work. With well, with that, you need more control. Yeah. I seem and that's to like the that the most. So, and it, yeah. did, did you always work in watercolor exclusively, or did you start with other? Did you come to it from after experimenting okay. with other media? I've always done artwork. I mean, from the time I was very small, I would make paper dolls, costumes, greeting cards, always, always doing something in the art field. And in college, I uh, took a several studio courses, and um, I would paint in oil there. Mm -hmm. Of course, they called them olive oils. <laughs> but then, uh, right out of the reason to leave oil painting, uh, uh, right out of college, home. I got married, I had children, and then I decided the Y was YWCA was coming to uh, do classes in the neighborhood, in our mm -hmm. the big rooms were in the parish house we used to have, and that's how I got into watercolor, uh, starting there, and then. Uh, I met Terry when there was a show in my church, and uh, I had a water my, one of my first watercolors on the wall, and that's when I got involved in the Brooklyn Watercolor Society. A long time ago, Terry. You went to the uh, the craft students league. That's where I met you. I've been to the what the uh, art students league, craft the craft students league. league, where we studied with Eleanor Seeger, who right. was a, an amazing, amazing teacher. She, she's the one that, uh, I think most of us, she, she really gave us the most She's the protege of Edgar Whitney. Yes, Edgar Whitney. So. Edgar Whitney. He's the genius teacher. Absolutely. So I, I, I want to bring out for Margaret Martin, who was a master at flowers. Oh, she A mistress at flowers. Oh, she was. She passed one. away at Christmas time. I know. I, did I send you that information? Like the flowers. She did everything. Her scenes, and her everything. And her buildings and her photos. Beautiful, beautiful art. But Eleanor Seeger taught a very special way because she, um, she would do these great demos in the beginning. And then you would kind of work, you bring your own inspiration to work from, but you try to incorporate her ways of uh, painting. And she was terrific. So. Do you have any advice or 
to people who are either new to watercolor or considering watercolor? Well, it's um, much more a media kind of process. Mm -hmm. So um, people who do oil and like to keep working, 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 if that's their thing, I don't think they would enjoy watercolor. Watercolor is very spontaneous. It may not look at some of my pieces, but uh, it goes on quickly, and uh, you're not, you're working, you're saving your light shapes, and in oil, you can just put them on at any time with white paint. In watercolor, you have to be aware of your lights and save those spaces. So that's, that's my story, <laughs> and I still love it, and I'm still working, so. Okay, very good. Action. Okay. Quiet on the set.